Anthropic just launched their brand new model called Claude 2, and we are going to be taking a look at it. They said that it's more performant and gives longer responses than their previous version. Now, if you're not familiar with Claude or Anthropic, that's probably because only specific business use cases were allowed to actually use Claude and its API. But now we have access to Claude 2. The API is still locked behind the business use case wall where only specific businesses are going to have access to it, but we actually get to look at Claude. Now let's take a quick look at the article that they released so that we can see some of the things that have changed with Claude 2. So scrolling down, we can see that we have different benchmark numbers. We're seeing 76%, um, which is up from the 73%. Uh, from Claude 1.3. So it's doing better on passing the bar. In terms of the Codex Human Eval, this is pretty much allowing the model to write code and its ability to do that has moved up from a 56 from a 56% all the way up to a 71%. It's becoming a lot better. It's gonna probably take your job. Just take that with a grain of salt. <laughs> They've also improved some of its uh, math problems, which are coming from a grade school level, but it's up to 88%, which is only up 3%. Um, we're gonna take a look at that right now. So scrolling down, we can see that Claude 2 is also two times better at giving harmless responses compared to Claude 1.3. It pretty much means that it's a little bit less fun. You can't ask it to do crazy things. All right, so with all that out of the way, let's actually talk to Claude. Uh, what you can do is you can head over to anthropic.com, uh, hit the talk to Claude button. Uh, when you first go through this process, it's going to ask you to sign up, but everything else is free. You can talk to Claude for free. You just need to have an account. All right. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to have Claude write us an essay. It's going to be a 200 word essay. This is something that chat GPT tends to have a problem with in terms of doing the word count. So let's go ahead and check this out. Write a 200 word essay about large language models. Now we're not actually going to read all of this. You can go ahead and pause the video but if you take a look at it it does have a very coherent way of speaking and you'll notice that we get 199 words which is perfect so if we go ahead and copy this let's go ahead and check out how many words it actually is all right we're over here at wordcounter.net we're going to paste this in and if we take a look it wasn't able to get the exact amount of words you'll see that we get 172 words but Claude is reporting that it's 199 words. Now, this is better than what I've seen on ChatGPT simply because when you ask ChatGPT to hit a, a number such as 200 words, it'll usually go over that amount, probably around 230, 250. Um, this is coming in at less, so it's still better. If you have to do a 200 word essay, it's better to have less. All right, so the next thing that we're going to check out is can Claude 2 work with templates or variables? I want you to come up with a marketing strategy strategy for a fashion business include first four steps to get started with this strategy. So let's go ahead and run that. All right. And as you can see, it can pick up the fact that we're supposed to be having a fashion business and it's giving us specifically four different steps. So it does allow you to use templates or variables. The next thing that I want to check with Claude 2 is to see if it utilizes roles. So I'll do something very generic like this. Can I have some general advice? So as you can see here, it printed out a bunch of different advice, and this is more along the lines of just your general basic advice that you could give to anybody that should be relevant to most people, right? So uh, be kind to others, keep learning, uh, take care of your health, everything that's related to your life, right? But if we go ahead and try this, on a new prompt and we specify the role for Claude 2 to act as. In this case, we're gonna tell Claude to act as a senior software engineer. Can I have some general advice? This shouldn't be about your general life. It should be from the standpoint of a developer. I know that I'm speaking to a developer and I should be getting back some information about becoming an, a software engineer. So we can see that um, right here, we're getting things back like, focus on writing clean, readable, maintainable code, don't reinvent the wheel, things like that. So you can you can see that roles actually do play a part when working with Claude. Now in the blog, it specified that Claude 2 does a lot better than Claude 1.3 in terms of working with grade school level math. So what we'll do is we'll paste in here uh, the equation that has actually broken the internet a couple of times. This is six divided by two, um, and then in parens, we have one plus two. And what's the answer? Now, what it's doing is it's using the order of operation to try to break this down. It's doing one plus two, and then that's going to be three. So you do two times three, that's six, six divided by six. This is actually incorrect. I have seen chat GPT also get this wrong, but essentially what you wanna do is once you get this 
three right here, the one plus two equals three, then you have to go from left to right. If you follow order of operations, this is just the way that it is. So it actually failed this, this question. Um, the answer is not one, it's actually nine. Now, next up, I have a math problem. This is more of a riddle than it is a math problem. And we wanna see if Claude can actually decipher the fact that it is a riddle as opposed to a math problem. So we see that one plus four equals five, that's correct. Two plus five is obviously seven, but we see that the answer is 12, right? And then we do the same thing with three plus six, and then we have to solve for X, right? So we have to find the pattern in order to figure out what the answer is for X. Now we can see that we're doing uh, one plus four equals five, two plus five equals 12, and it's reiterating back what we already have, but it's it's trying to figure out X and we're trying to see the pattern and it, it comes up with eight plus 11 is 19, which is correct mathematically, but is not correct when you follow the pattern. Now, one, there's two different ways to follow this pattern. So there's two different answers. The one that I like to remember is one plus four equals five. Then you do uh, two plus five, which is seven, and then you add it to the last result. So it would be two plus five plus five, that's 12. Three plus six, nine, plus 12, 21. So I would expect to see eight plus 11, 19 plus 21 equals 40. It was not able to break down this problem or this uh, this brain teaser. All right, so Claude two wasn't really able to solve the math problem. Let's move on. And we're going to actually try out chain of thought and we can do this using a little bit of a riddle. So the riddle is going to be in 1990, a person is 15 years old. In 1995, that same person is 10 years old. How can this be? So then we give it the chain of thought. Uh, we're asking it to look over this brain teaser and solve it step by step. That's kind of the, the chain of thought way of going about it. Now you can see that it's trying to reason that this is contradictory. This can't happen. Simple explanation is that is being measured using different systems um, in the two years. So you can see that it's coming up with some kind of reasoning um, 10 years from the year 2000 though uh, five years older than normal aging. Um, it's it's using 2000 as a reference point, um, but it's not actually coming up with the right answer, which is we're counting in um, BC, not AD. So we're working with BC time, not AD time. And that's why it's not able to figure out this riddle. Next, we're gonna try a tree of thought prompt, and that should hopefully give us the right answer. So you can see what are some possible reasons that can explain the following brain teaser. Now we can see that we get a lot of different answers. Person's birthday is on uh, February 29th. Uh, the numbers are mistakenly reversed. Uh, it's a trick question. Uh, the person is traveling near the speed of light, some sort of magic or supernatural effect medical condition, <laughs> some Benjamin button, I don't know, um, fictional world, and the person is just straight up lying. So again, we're working in uh, AD, not BC, or we're working in BC time, not AD time. Um, let's go ahead and go a step further, and we can do that by having it evaluate the likelihood as percentages on each of these. And what we'll do is we'll figure out you know, which one of these are the most likely. So we have reverse numbers being really likely and uh, mistaken or lying about their age being likely. Now, if we were to continue this um, tree of thought, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the top three results of what they've given us so far, come up with two more results that are more likely than the highest result that we've been given so far. And that's going to uh, give us some more answers. Now we've got cloning, which is a 40% likelihood. So cloning is more likely than them being mistaken or lying about it. And then age transformation. So you can continue to go through this process. I went through this process once before. It wasn't able to figure it out. Eventually it will just give up. All right, we're coming down to the last few tests that we're going to run on Claude 2. And what I want it to do now is create a to-do app. Now, keep in mind that Python is the number one coding language when it comes to working with um, ML models. And um, it's just one of the most popular languages that you can use on almost any machine. So obviously they're gonna give it back in Python. Also in the codex, uh, human eval, that's what it was uh, rated for, was writing Python code. So we have this Python code, let's go ahead and copy it. All right, I copy and pasted the code in here, as you can see, we, I just pasted it in and, and now all we need to do is run python to do.py. 
And as you can see, it gave us my to-do list. Now I created a to-do list, but it didn't actually make it so that we can interact with it. So it looks like it has the functionality of creating a to-do, but you'll notice that there is no if statement while true um, to actually allow for user input and things like that. I've seen that this code has varied a lot and sometimes it will make a working terminal to do app. Um, other times it won't. All right. So we saw it give us uh, an attempt of making a to do app with Python. Um, I have even less expectations for it to be able to do the same thing. But for iOS, I come from a mobile background, so I'm going to do it in iOS. But you can just assume that this is going to be with any um, you know mobile development uh, platform if it wasn't able to do it in python it's going to have an even harder time uh, doing it in any other language that isn't python including javascript i've tried it doesn't work that well you'll notice that it does get a lot of the boilerplate set up in here for anybody that's familiar with ios code um, but it doesn't have any functionality. It does tend to give a lot of functions, but not the implementation of those functions. So it doesn't do well, but it is able to, you know, generate some of the boilerplate code that you might need to get up and running for, for something like an, a to-do app for iOS. All right, so the last test is where Claude really excels and it's working with text and keeping all that text in context to reference it and respond. So as you can see, I already have this article loaded in as a PDF. You can work with a couple of different attachments, a maximum of five. They can be a maximum of, of 10 megabytes each. Those are relatively large uh, files. And you can see that it accepts PDF text and CSV files. You can't work with the images right now. So just keep that in mind. This is the paper. You'll see it's called large language models as general pattern machines. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna ask Claude, what are the key points of this paper? And it's going to take a couple of seconds to go through all of the information from the paper and then it's going to spit out the different key points all right and it just spit out all the key points that it can that it wanted to cover so it's talking about llms like gpt3 exhibited ability to uh work with complex token sequences and abstract patterns now it's essentially just talking about patterns and being able to say like oh it can it can work with patterns really well and the way that I want to be able to understand that, uh, explain like I'm five big AI models that are trained to understand language can also learn to complete patterns with any type of symbols, not just words and solving them kind of like puzzles and shapes. And then it goes through and it, it gives an explanation that's a little bit easier to digest. So that's all I really wanted to show you in terms of Claude two. It's a really amazing model. And this is really where it shines was this last example is providing it with a large amount of text. And what Claude 2 is able to do is it's able to use that 100,000 token limit and keep a lot of your text in context. So if you're having long conversations with Claude, it will remember almost everything. If you give it a whole entire book um, that it can, you know, that can fit into its context window, then you can ask questions without it missing out on anything. And this eliminates the needs for needs for things like vector da databases. So that is where Claude 2 really shines. Let me know what you're using Claude 2 for. Do you prefer Claude 2? Do you prefer ChatGPT? Do you prefer something else? Let me know in the comments below. Later.